Hello, greetings, and welcome, everyone. This is the Psychic Inside Show, and I am your host, the Vibrarian Joelle, and I am so glad that you're here with me this evening. My goal is to elevate, enlighten, and empower you with information that I hope that you find positive and helpful. Every Tuesday, we're here on the Vibrary Radio Network on Blog Talk Radio for the Psychic Inside Show, where we talk with people who have discovered their psychic gifts and abilities. And the goal is that you will hear something that might resonate with you and help you understand a little bit more about yourself. I do have a Facebook community that you could join. That we're calling, I call them the Good Vibe Tribe because I believe your vibe attracts your tribe to you, and I've been building a network of positive-minded people who have things to share with the world. And we come together in community. I would invite you to join me on Facebook, and that is at The Vibrarian, and that's V as in vibe, I-B-E as in energy, R-A-R-I-A-N. I would love for you to click on over, like, comment, and share on the things that I'm sending. If you have something that's positive, uplifting, that you want me to share with people to get the word out, please send me a message, let me know, and I'd be glad to forward it along to improve people's realities. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram with at the vibrarian. That's my handle. And I'm always out trying to capture positive moments that I see around me. It might be a butterfly that comes across the sky or something that I see that just strikes my fancy. And I try to share that. And I also stay very much connected to what people are posting that is positive uplifting. And I try to recirculate that energy. So please join us. Um, Tonight during our show, there is a chat room that is available through the Blog Talk Radio page, which is blogtalkradio.com slash the vibrary, and that's V-I-B-E-R-A-R-Y. Are you sensing a theme here? I used to be a librarian, but now I'm the vibrarian. I'm using my librarian superpowers for good. So I'm creating all of these spaces for us to come and gain knowledge. You can also catch the rebroadcast of our shows from Tuesday and also Thursday shows on my YouTube channel. You can search for The Vibrary on YouTube, and at some point I'll have enough subscribers that YouTube will allow me to claim my channel name, but for right now you just have to search for me. But I promise if you type in The Psychic Inside of The Vibrary, you'll be directed to my page where you can catch up on the episodes that you might have missed. Now, every Tuesday evening, the Psychic Inside show, I interview people who are sharing their psychic stories. But on Thursday night is the Vibrarian show, and that is really like a cross between the X-Files and Indiana Jones because I leave no stone unturned. If there's something you want to know about or curious about that's mysterious or intriguing to you, we're going to try to talk about it every Thursday night from 9 o'clock till 10 or 11, depending on the conversation. I come together and I have a panelist of guests who contribute their knowledge to this show's subject. We've been talking about things like dream, dreams, lucid dreaming, dream symbols, astral travel. I think we're getting ready to talk about Akashic Records in the next couple of weeks, and I believe we've got an episode about Twin Flames coming up uh, in early August. So you definitely want to stay tuned because you never know what the subject matter is going to be, but it's usually quite interesting. And I just love it because I'm having a blast sharing this with all of you, and I'm so glad that you tune in from week to week. Our show line tonight is 646-668-8988. You can stream live from your computer or if you're listening on the phone, if you would like to call in to ask a question of the guest tonight, then you certainly just press 1 when you come on the line, and that lets me know that you have a question to ask. Now, tonight our special guest has agreed to provide complimentary mini readings at the last segment of the show, but I do want to let you know that that won't happen till after the 10 o'clock hour. So if you are holding, know that I will get to you when it comes time for your psychic reading question. And before that, you feel free to, you know, send comments or give, um, you know, give a shout out to the guest of the night if you're one of her supporters. I know that I am a very, very big supporter of tonight's guest, and I'm so excited. I hope you can hear the smile in my voice. It is 
a wonderful lady who I've known now through uh, phone conversations. I feel like I know her in real life because we've done so much work together. But my guest this evening is Martha Rivers. You might know her as Lady M because she has been around the Atlanta area providing spiritual guidance and readings for a couple decades now, I'm pretty sure, because I think I've been connected at least for seven or so years myself, and she's kind of like a, what I would call a legend, legend in my book because I've seen her all over the place at Cafe Jonah's Magical Attic, which was a place here in Atlanta, and um, her clients are all over the world. And so I was really pleased to be able to coordinate our schedules to get her on for tonight's show. So I would love to just introduce you all to Miss Martha, Lady Martha, Lady M. Rivers. Miss Martha, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Welcome. Oh, hi, baby. I'm so happy to be here with you all. And um, I was happy when you called me and asked me to join in and uh, come in today. So it was a pleasure for me, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was so happy. Well, thank you. Now, would you prefer for me to call you Lady M or Miss Martha? How would you like to be addressed? (laughs) It it don't matter. You know, to me, it's like um, I'm all of them in one. I'm Martha Rivers, Lady M. (laughs) So it don't matter. It's, it's okay. whatever feels comfortable for you to call me. Okay. Yeah, well, it's I Lady M LLC, so that's my okay. business name anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just really respectful of you because I, I have to share that, you know, I, I have had the fortune of having you advise me personally but I and I also then wound up with several of my friends, probably five or six, who wound up connecting with you over the years. And everyone just says, "Oh my gosh, she's so clear! I never had a reading like that before." And from what I understand of what you shared with me, you were born like you were what you be considered a born psychic. Like you had the gift of second sight at a that you were aware of at a very young age. Then is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh huh. I found out more about it, Joel, when I was about like seven, when I was getting baptized in church, and mm-hmm. I had a out of body experience. Then, you know, I left and you know um, went on the other side. They call it astral projection. So I really, mm-hmm. you know, like was amazed at what was happening to me. It was like something I I can't explain. You know, and, I, and I'm like 57 now, so it's like it's like a real beautiful experience in my life. Mm-hmm. Well, so so when you were being baptized, that was when it happened that you you had that out of body experience. And how did the how how did your mother or your your church respond to what you said when after your baptism happened? Okay, it was something, Joel. Okay, what happened is, like, we were all in church, and um, we was, you know, trained to go and, you know, once we get baptized, to go to our seat. So with me and uh, six of my sisters, we were there, and as, you know, I went on up there to get baptized, and, you know, I was fine. And as I was walking back to my, you know, the seat down the steps, I thought it flying. And so I'm looking like, you know, what's going on here? You know, why am I flying like this? And as I look around, I see, you know, the other, you know, my fleshy part standing there. And I'm looking, I say, what happened? Why am I over there and I'm over here? And so um, I go to try to get back in their body, and something pulled me back with some great force. And so when they pulled me back, I was looking like, okay, I'm not going to do anything because it was like so strong, you know. I, I knew that I wasn't supposed to be doing anything. It's like a quietness, but it was, it was like, you know, force. I knew it was strong, and so when I stood there, uh, it took me up a little higher in the church to the ceiling. I seen the people in the church, and they were just like statues. They weren't moving, and so I'm looking like, what is going on here? You know, this is kind of weird. You know, I'm just standing here looking at this, these people, and they're not moving, and I was afraid I was going to fall, so I just stood there. I wouldn't move. And so as it, 
I stood there a little bit more, and so they took me through the ceiling, up through the clouds. I seen the clouds and everything went way up in the sky. When I went way up in the sky, I stood there again, like a quietness. And as I was looking, you know, at the, you know, space, I was at in space, I seen the stars and everything, it was dark. But then when I was getting baptized, it was daylight. So I'm looking like I'm way up in space and scared, don't know what's going on. And uh, so I heard a man's voice, and when I heard the man's voice, he said, turn around. When I turned around, you know, I seen, um, you know, a like gold chairs, like it was like it was burning, but it was not burning. It was like it was really, mm-hmm. you know, like hot, gold hot. You you seen when you see the gold melting? Mm-hmm. It just mm-hmm. looked like it was melting, but it wasn't melting. It was still like as gold, and it was an image. Well, it was a man on there. I ain't gonna say an image because it was a man on there, and he was um, like somebody cut a sun out and made a man. That's just like he was a light. And mm. his hair was like white like wool, and he had a long white gown on it was so beautiful white, like they just cut the cloud and made his gown, and he had a crown on his head with pretty emerald diamonds and rubies and stuff like that on it, and it all was like strong, and it had a baby sitting in his lap, you know, same thing, face like a sun, like I was looking at the sun, but it was so bright, it was just so bright. But I seen, you know, the child, and it was a man, and I seen, well, it was a baby, it was a male, and I seen the one that was holding the baby, it was a male. And it was like a bright light. It was like, Joy was like, we were like telepathic, like communicating. That way is what we were moving our mouth. It was just like I knew what he was, you know, saying to me, and I understood mm-hmm. it, and he knew what I was, you know, like he was reading my mind. And I was up for a long time a real long time because he was talking to me. It was other people, you know, well, I ain't going to say other people because it was spirits of the same way looked like light, but they were people. They was in church too, I guess. To me, I felt like that was the elders that was around them because mm-hmm. they uh, talk about that. So it was like uh, a long, you know, like a long line of other spirits there, male and female, and it was a senior with king crown of his too. And it was sitting there, but the main person was spirit that was talking to me was the one that was, you know, with the most power. And I assumed it was God, you know, because mm. he told me, this is my son. This is who I'm pleased with. And, you know, mm. as I look at what's going on right now, I knew it had to be God. But see, he wasn't, he wasn't no black, he wasn't white, <laughs> you know, he's just like mm-hmm. a son, like a light. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. people say, well, they want to know what color it is. But I'm about like when Moses said he's seen a light. You know, I'm seeing a light, mm-hmm. but it was a person mm-hmm. who was made like that. And um, he told me, he asked me that I want to stay there. And he asked me, he said, come and sit next to his son, you know. And I told him that I can't stay because if I stay, I was going to get in trouble because I was trying to figure out how did I get here. Where, mm. where is this at? But it wasn't bad, you know. I didn't feel no kind, right. no type of a badness. I just felt like a love and like a beautiful, like you know, like you're playing a harp, beautiful, mm-hmm. just beautiful music and everything. It felt so good. It didn't feel bad. And so mm. um, I told him I couldn't stay because I was going to get in trouble. And as I said that, I was back to really take my the same step. I would never go. So. The time there was different, you know, like I left when mm-hmm. I left, take a step. And when I came back, I was still in a position to great take a step. So it was just like time had stopped mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. when that happened. Mm-hmm. It was something. And so I'm going to let you go on and ask me another question if you will, because I, it's some more well, stuff I, after that. I was, but I felt like I was just thinking. I was, hmm. Well, I was I was just thinking for for such a young person to have that experience that really had to be uh, wild would be the simplest word that I can use for it because I think about seven that's probably like first grader maybe a little past kindergarten first to second grade that's mm-hmm. like a very powerful uh, you definitely would never forget something like that. Um, and had anyone in your family experienced, is this like a family gift? Did they know how to support you when you came back into the 
the earthly plane. The, 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 okay, the, see, uh huh. See, it's like when okay, when I came back into you know to you know my body and everything, and I felt, you know, it was weird. It's like I felt like, you know, when people was around me, I felt like they were dirty. <laughs> It was weird. Mm-hmm. I felt like I was picking up on their evilness. You see what I'm saying? See, it when it, see it was just like mm-hmm. when I was there. I guess maybe I was cleansed, you know. Mm-hmm. And so when I came back in my body, I sort of feeling, you know, that negative energy. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. the only thing I can mm-hmm. suggest with that. And so it's like I was picking up on people's thoughts, what they were thinking, and it was like. um you know, like if somebody was thinking something bad, I was like, ooh, I want to be around mm-hmm. them. You know, I was mm-hmm. just picking up on it. It's like I was mm-hmm. seeing their negativity, you know, and it was mm-hmm. weird. And, you know, like um, it's like I was, like, quiet to myself for a while so I can kind of, like, figure out what was going on, you know, because it was, like, weird. I was just feeling this weirdness. And I knew I wouldn't like it before I left, you know, I know I was kind of like when doing anything, but when that happened, it was like totally just like, it's just like, okay, to me it felt like I was left up there and yet another one, somebody else came dead in my body. That's the way I felt. Mm-hmm. Like I was a different mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. I just think about, yeah, you know, uh, renewed in spirit, you know, I, I, I can, you know, coming from a church tradition myself, you know, what you're mm-hmm. speaking about uh, definitely uh, resonates from the teachings I understood as a child about what the heavenly realm would be like. But uh, it didn't happen to me when I was baptized, you know. I think I probably would have just been spluttering and, you know, cold or whatever if it was a full immersion baptism. But so so when, did your pastor at that point, did you say something to the pastor or your mother about what you experienced? Because you said it was only like a brief moment, like you were still in the process of moving your foot, that all that truly happened yes. in the twinkling of an eye. So did they know yes. something had happened to you? Hmm. Yeah. Do you know what? It was like everything had stopped because the people weren't moving. I was I was looking at my body there. You see what I'm saying? I was looking at myself. You heard when the people say when they die and then they leave their body mm-hmm. and then they come mm-hmm. back and they start hearing this other stuff. That's the same thing that I went through. So that's why, you know, I kind of feel like some people are not lying when they say that because I had that same experience, but I wasn't near death or nothing. I was just in church getting baptized. Right. I wasn't. Right. Yeah, see, and then when them people say they've seen that, I really believe that because, you know, I was only seven and nobody talked to me about any of that stuff. So it ain't nothing mm-hmm. that I could have just, like, learned it from somebody. Right, right. See, when I let me tell you, when I talked to the pastor, and they were saying, uh, he said, "Well, stuff like that don't happen until people die. You know, they get, like they have a a death experience." Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what he was telling me. And my mom told me she said, "Well, I don't know because nobody can't see God and still be alive." And so that kind of like pushed me away a little bit, and I kind of like figured out, like, well, why are they seeing this? And I know what I've seen. You know, I, I don't understand, you know, mm-hmm. what was going on here. Because, see, they see nobody can't physically see him. And see, what happened mm-hmm. to me is like, you know, I went in my body. So, therefore, like when John with the revelation, mm-hmm. he said mm-hmm. this, he said, he became dead as a doornail. He was in the spirit. And see, when you're in the spirit, you can see stuff like that. And so that's why, you know, I was there, you know, because like mm-hmm. like I went in my body, I was, it was just like it was, you know, I know I was born one child, so it was like it was two of me. I was right here on earth and I was up there. Mm-hmm. But the part mm-hmm. of me that was on earth, I didn't have no feeling of it. It's just like if somebody would have shot it or whatever, I wouldn't even felt it. Because mm. the most part of me was where I was at. You know, it's interesting because you hear, like I've heard stories of, of like children who begin to speak in tongues, and it seems like mm-hmm. there is, an, the church then has an understanding when that child presents the speaking of tongues gift of how to then nurture them, you know, and they immediately mm-hmm. gather around to support that young person or adult who has that spiritual uh, come in for them. 
Uh, but it uh-huh. seems like you did something so unique that there was no game plan for then how to support you mm-hmm. to grow more in that. That's true. That's true. I'm telling you, the only thing that really helped me, you know, to get more closer to that is -hmm. because I was blessed that I was in church and, you know, I sit there and I analyze and I watch things, you know, I sit back and watch people and, Mm -hmm. you know, I read the Bible a lot and that's what I'm – I kept on questioning when I got married. I kept on saying, I knew that was God. I don't care what people say because I know I've seen God because, you know, you know, it, it was it was something I ain't never seen on this earth. So how did I get there? And I knew I was just out in space, you know, because I'm looking at the space where, you know, when they said it mm-hmm. was in space, you know, I look at the stars and all that, and I'm looking like I'm up there. And they're telling me that this is not real. And so I started praying one day, Joel, when I was about 20, I was about 23, I started praying. Mm -hmm. And when I started praying, I asked God, I said, God, I know that was you that I seen. I know it was you, and I don't know why these people are telling me this stuff. Because, you know, I was seeing all kind of psychic stuff through the whole thing. You know, through the whole time Mm -hmm. when I was growing up, I was picking up on people's thoughts and everything. And so that day right there, I just started praying. You know, because, see, my ex-husband's a Muslim, you know, so he was mm-hmm. into the Quran and stuff like that. So he was telling me that, you know, I got to leave the Bible on. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to leave the Bible on. I'm going to keep the Bible. You keep your Quran and I keep my Bible. So mm-hmm. so what I did, I started praying. And then so I opened up the page, just, just opened up the book, and then there it was right in front of my eyes. It said, John, he said, immediately he became get as a doornail, and he was in the spirit. Mm-hmm. And so I said, mm-hmm. he's. You know, he's seen that, and I said, that's exactly similar to what I've seen. Mm-hmm. But what I've seen, I've seen a man holding a baby, mm-hmm. you know, when I've seen mm-hmm. it. But mm-hmm. when he's seen it, he, uh, I'm I'm not for sure, but I think he just said he just seen one person. But I've seen a baby there. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just, it, I'm seeing this picture that you're sharing in my mind, and it just seems so, uh, you know, when I think, I hear like the mercy seat, you know, so when you were talking about the thrones and the chairs and stuff. And so, I mean, when mm-hmm. you were then uh, um, in middle school and junior high and high school, you kind of then had this private personal soundtrack happening where you were hearing and seeing stuff that no one else was so you were permanently kind of in that in between reality where it was constantly that had to be challenging as a, as a student did you get in trouble ever for saying things that you you know that you knew or people call you a liar because they're like, no, you should know that. You know? <laughs> yeah, but what happened. You know, okay, you know yourself, Joelle. You know us Libras. They, we we kind of got this little charm about us, and a lot of people kind of like us a lot. So I kind of did it in a cute little way. <laughs> and see, when I did it in a cute way, I was like the teacher's pet. They, you know, and just like a lot of people, they, you know, plus I was smart. You know, I, I was real smart. Mm-hmm. And so I, I guess, by me being smart and being spiritual, that kind of helped a lot. And people were, like, drawn to me a lot. You know, mm-hmm. like if I, you know, I help a lot of people then, you know, I would talk to them and everything. If I don't come to school, they'll tell me, you, you need to come to school. We don't have fun unless you're here. So <laughs> some people were mad at me <laughs> because they wanted to have that, you know, that attraction and that, you know, that drawing spirit that I had. Some people were mad about it and some people loved it. So mm-hmm. it's it's like it was normal to me. I just know that, you know, I ain't did anything to anybody. And if they don't like me, it, it's it got to be something wrong with them. <laughs> That's what I'm saying because I don't right. do anything right. to anybody. It try to, you know, do, I try to, you know, because I try to treat people the way I want to be treated. Right, right. Now, mm-hmm. so you're in your 20s and you, you had your prayerful moment. Did were mm-hmm. you working doing something else like uh, as a as a career by that point in time? Yes, honey. I was first um, when I was like in my teens. I was watching children. <laughs> 
God help me. I watched children. I had 10 of them. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. So when mm-hmm. I got older, I started doing housekeeping and um, answering the phone to different uh, businesses and stuff like that. So I did a little different type of temporary jobs and stuff like that. I did a lot of different types of jobs. But the thing of it is, when I was doing them jobs, the people were saying, you know, like, you know, it, I just didn't, it just didn't feel like I belonged there because mm-hmm. of the way, you know, I carried myself, I guess. Okay, mm-hmm. so when I met my friend, when I moved to Georgia, you know, she's a reader too. She reads coffee cups. And so what she told me, she oh. said, Martha, she said, yeah, she's, she's something. And she said, Martha, you, you're not going to, um, God don't want you to work. He wants you to be out helping people. And I'm looking mm-hmm. like, I got to work. <laughs> so she said, no. Right. She said, your job is to be out there, you know, helping people, you mm-hmm. know, spiritually. She said, that's your job. And she said, you were called for that. I said, yeah, I was called for that, but, you know, I got to get paid. I got to take care of my family. And she said, mm-hmm. God will make a way for you. So I decided to go ahead and do it and take the chance. And so that's when I really, really went out and started, you know, reading. Because... um and be- when I started reading people. Hmm? Well, I was thinking that people tend to wind up asking Libras for advice anyway. So you were probably doing mm-hmm. a lot of unofficial reading for people and using guidance that people didn't even know that you were tapped in like that. They just thought you were a good friend and wise person. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. But then they would ask me, how did I know the things that I know? <laughs> Mm-hmm. They would ask me, how do you know that? I said, well, you know, I just I just kind of feel it. You know, I just would explain to them that I was seeing these things. It'd be, mm-hmm. see, it would be like it'd be like a television when I'm looking at it, and I'm hearing the mm-hmm. talking just like I turn to Channel 2, and I'm looking like, oh, that's on Channel 2. Okay, mm-hmm. I see the person's face and everything, and I turn to Channel 5. I said, I want to look at Fox 5, you know. It was just that. <laughs> it was like I was picking up on different types of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'd be, you mm-hmm. know what, Joel, I'd be sometime in my room sometime, and I'd be picking up things in Japan, and I'm looking like, oh, my God, I'm in Japan now, mm-hmm. I'm in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't need no ticket for Delta because it, it's just like right. I have so many astro traveling and then – you know, I hear what they're saying. It's like I can go anywhere and and pick up on things. It's like I touch things. I see. I get so sensitive when I be around people because see, I, when I touch and I feel it, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get in a personal life like that. I try to get in respect, right. but sometimes right. it just be hard. You know, that I just pick it up and. You know, they get mad, like, how you know that? And why I can't see it? I said, look, I don't even know why you can't see it. Apparently, it's it's not for you. Because I try to tell people, right. sometimes you meant to be something else. You just, you, just like with Hillary and Donald Trump, mm-hmm. you know, no mm-hmm. matter what, Donald Trump was going to be the president. That was his, that's who he was supposed to be. And I try to tell people, if they do what they're supposed to be, that's where their success lies. And, you know, it's interesting because you said that you shared that you your readings leading up to the election, you shared that uh, you said Trump was going to win the election, and you got a lot of pushback from people who said that your your vision was incorrect and that you were wrong. And I think people can still go back and look on your YouTube channel to find your predictions about that. And there were very few, very few psychics in terms of what I was seeing on YouTube who were calling it in that direction leading up to the election. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you're right. It was something because they kept on telling me, no, no, no. They said, here we're going to win. I said, let me tell you something. The only way she's going to win is she's a woman, a male, I mean a male, and she ain't letting nobody know she's a male. That's the only <laughs> only way she's going to win. I said, it's going to be a male winning that election. And you can mm-hmm. mark my word. And he said, well, Donald Trump is, I said, well, I told you it's going to be a, blue, a blue-eyed, a blue blonde-haired man, and he looked like he was mm-hmm. a good character that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know, as you, were, I, as you were describing mm-hmm. your gifts, a lot of the psychics that I've had on the show, and it was also as well as my own development, um, people tend to be kind of strong in one area or maybe two, like they have the clairvoyance or the clear seeing or they're clear knowing, clear cognizant. 
they might have a little <laughs> bit of clear audience, but you seem like you had everything, all of the clairs, all five or six of them, full strength from after the point of your experience in the in at seven, which is unusual. Amen. I honestly haven't heard anyone else on the show talk about that level of all. You can see it, smell it, hear it, taste it, visualize it, travel to it, you know, all of that. Uh, in, in one total package. It's very, very unique, you know. Thank you. Now, Thank you. It, in your family, did your mother, anyone, did it come out later as you got older that you had relatives who also had this gift or these gifts, or was it just divinely gifted in that incident rather than hereditary? Honey, let me tell you about that, wouldn't you? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I have eight sisters and four brothers, right? It's 13 oh, of us, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of the apostles. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, girl. And you know, it's so funny because see, a lot of my sisters, you know, uh, they they would kind of like, okay, I got a couple of them, you know, like two of them, they would be okay with it. And one of them told me as we got older, she said, Martha, you always was different. She said, you always would be, you didn't do anything to nobody, but they always used to pick at you and mess with you and everything, but you didn't do anything to anybody. And so mm-hmm. they know that I was seeing this stuff, and then I would be scared. I would tell them, don't do this, because if you do that, something's going to happen. They're like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, they're older than me, too. Okay, so when the mm-hmm. stuff happened, Joel, I'm a witch. And I'm looking like, for real, uh, I'm a witch, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a witch. Mm-hmm. So how am I a witch and everything? Because I'm telling you something. And, see, I thought they were seeing this. I really didn't think that they was not seeing this stuff. Right, yeah, right. I promise you, I didn't yeah. never think it. You know, because I just thought, because they were my siblings, that we all were just alike. But as mm-hmm. I got older, mm-hmm. I see that we all were different. Everybody had their own spirituality. You know, they have mm-hmm. their own purpose, and they really couldn't see it. And uh, one of my sisters is Jehovah Witness, and she claimed mm-hmm. it's evil and it's a curse. And I'm looking like, so just because you can't see it, then it's a curse, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. looking like, how is that? Mm-hmm. You know, you can't tell me that I cannot see this, and this is a part of me, and I'm telling you something that's going to help you, and so then it's evil. How could that be evil? If it's telling you mm-hmm. not to do something that's going to be hurting you or you're going to be doing something that you might shouldn't do so it can mm-hmm. save you from, you know, hurting yourself or getting hurt by somebody. So that's evil. Mm-hmm. I thought it was evil if you're right. doing the evil to do, get it done. But she was trying to tell me, she's uh, two years younger than me. She was trying to say that that's, you know, that's not supposed to be happening. I'm saying, okay. So I'm just going to just right. block my mind off again, like I did when I was mm-hmm. younger, and just forget about this beautiful gift that God gave me to help the world, right? to help people. Right. So I'm just going right. to just totally cut it off. You know, that's a, that's why I was wondering about when you, after your baptism experience, because from I've heard from a lot of people as they talk about their stories that they kind of are unfellowship out the body of the church because the church <laughs> um, in certain eras, we're coming to a different place now, but in certain eras, the church then did not have room for this type of manifestation that mm-hmm. did not challenge the structure of like the pastor led church dynamic. And so it's very mm-hmm. painful then when people's faith group put them out of faith. And I was wondering if you had that then experience. And so you're saying even within your family, not even in the church, you had your family who had beliefs that kind of pushed you, uh, they tried to push you away from them out of fear. Yep. That's very, you know, very interesting. Uh Let me tell you about the church now. Okay, I got to tell you about this one because everybody needs to hear this. Okay, Mm -hmm. um, I got older, right, and so... My last three children's daddy, he went to school to be a minister here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is they tell them that they're not supposed to teach certain things 
in the Bible. So they keep them like stuck in the same thing. They can't go mm-hmm. above that. And see, that's not right because, you know, they try to, you know, a lot of times they didn't want you to learn about the revelation. They didn't want you to know about mm-hmm. all this stuff that's really happening and see the people mm-hmm. be confused because they don't really understand this. They don't understand, you know, like if they have having these dreams and then they're going outside and then they're seeing exactly what they had in the dream, so they get scared like, oh, God, I can't do this because that's not, that's mm-hmm. not natural. <laughs> you know, that's not mm-hmm. real. They're not teaching mm-hmm. them that. They said in the, in the Bible, they said the last days God's going to pour his spirit in my flesh and they're going to see dreams yes. and they're going to prophesy. But they ain't, yeah, yeah they're not talking about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're trying to keep mm-hmm. them stuck like that's not supposed to be happening. There's something wrong with right. you. Let's put you in a mini institution. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what they right. do. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, somebody had uh, recommended to me a couple years ago, uh, one of the guests has been on the show earlier, his name is Marcus Howe, and he also comes from a very, <laughs> like, very God-centric, the God, these are my God-given gifts, and he recommended uh-huh. that I go to this psychic development school called the Viva Institute, and I did. Oh, no. And the first, well, the first session, they really went through all the biblical scriptures that actually support um, spiritual mm-hmm. manifestation because they said mm-hmm. their, their whole theory was that you may be shutting yourself down because you have developed a belief or been taught a belief that's telling you mm-hmm. exactly what you said, that it's wrong that you're seeing and hearing these things. And mm-hmm. here is an uh, answer to the scriptures you might have heard. Did you see mm-hmm. this one? And they kind of went through a pretty in-depth in the Old and New Testament teaching where there is evidence of this in a positive mm-hmm. way and so I really appreciate okay. that being a preacher's child you know what I'm saying yes. uh, Amen. It connected <laughs> to me you know as well mm-hmm. uh huh see and that's what they need to see over I had heard this before I've never been to Russia but I heard a lot of people talk about this because you know I listen to a lot of different things you probably heard it too they said over in Russia they teach their children over there like if they're going to be a doctor, they do astrology charts on them, and they put them on what they're supposed to be, you know, attaining mm-hmm. in life. They don't just go and mm-hmm. see, it's like, say, like if they got some of them is smart at math, they put them all in the class where they teach them on their level what they're supposed to be on. They just don't throw them in a, right. in a group like they're doing like a pig swap, you know what I'm saying? Like they throw them in there and mm-hmm. get in there and do this. They they don't do that. They, they be, right. because, you know, Everybody on this earth has something to, you know, bring to the earth. You know what I'm saying? And if they're right. not fulfilling what they come here to bring, it's making Mother Nature, you know, mm-hmm. not organized. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. what's going mm-hmm. on because they're not putting them where they need to be at. So, it can, you know, when they come here, they come here for a reason. Right, right. You know, everybody, yeah. and, and they don't do it. Hmm. Well, I would say I have heard that in China, I saw a documentary mm-hmm. that was, um, I think you can find it on YouTube, called China's Psychic Children. And what they Ooh, say uh-huh. is that especially things like remote viewing, where you can, you know, close mm-hmm. your eyes and see somewhere, like you said, Japan and overseas that you've never been before, but you can see it with absolute clarity. And they screen yep. for psychic gifts and then use them for their since it's a you know a compulsory kind of country where you don't have choice, and they they yep. put them in in the classes and in the professions in the military, and they have mm-hmm. these rooms in where these children will report back to them. This is what I see. This is this building, and this is where the doors are. And it's like a whole new Ooh. level of spying, you know, psychic spying. And I thought that was interesting <laughs> when I saw that, but you know. Uh-huh. Um, it just goes to show if a society embraces something and then incorporates mm-hmm. it rather than causing fear and rejection mm-hmm. of it, you know, and mm-hmm. I think we're coming into that time when, thankfully, kids today have an opportunity to mm-hmm. see a lot more things. And so they're yep. now not going to be shunned as much yep. or as outcasts, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Um, 
it's very, very interesting uh, to hear your perspective of it. And I definitely appreciate it because uh, you are, and every time I've spoken with you, you are like, you know, God directly gave it to me. And I'm not going to argue with man <laughs> about what I have received and my experience. You. you can't change my knowing of my experience because of your belief system. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So, now, when you started seeing clients um, in, in, in time, I know also that no matter what your gift is, if it's given to you, then you will be supported to give that gift. That's why it was given to you. And that could be if you're a Amen. teacher, a musician, a mathematician, and you're just supposed Amen. to be doing what God intended you to do, and you will be abundantly financially supported and happy doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm assuming that you like doing this. This is not hard work for you. I mean, it's energetic, but it's not something you're like, oh, I got to wake up tomorrow and be a psychic. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know. I know. I thank God that I didn't have to go do that. It's it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's and to me it's kind of like, um, you know, like, I can hear what the person is saying, and it's like it helps me a lot, you know, to grow too, mm-hmm. you know, because it can keep me from doing things that would get me more into a, a negative energy. And I, I mm-hmm. try to stay in the positive energy. And so I said, thank God that I was blessed like I had to see that because no telling what would have happened to me if, mm-hmm. I, was, if I didn't have that type of knowledge. I said, thank God. <laughs> right. Now, over the years, and I know that, you know, um, and the people who have been tuning in every week also are starting to understand how it works, but there's certain privacy. It's almost like going into the confession with the priest when you're talking with mm-hmm. a spiritual advisor or psychic because it's it's even more intimate than seeing someone naked because you're seeing their true and honest uh, selves. Now, Amen. is there any... Like, do you have, like, a story that you're able to share that sticks out for you for, like, the most amazing moment that you had with a client where you really, really felt either strongly uh, maybe a negative experience or a positive uh, experience? Okay. 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 One person now, uh, when I was working at the underground, and this is something, too, uh, she she comes down there, and um, she wanted to get a reading, and I seen these some types of spirits around her, and I'm looking at her like, golly, <laughs> seeing all these spirits mm-hmm. around her, but they were all negative spirits, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. she was doing a lot of negative stuff, and see the mm-hmm. stuff that she was doing, she was like, um, it's almost like you know, prostitution and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So she was doing Mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. But see, I knew she was doing it, but I didn't never tell her she was doing it. Because, you know, I try to give her respect. I try to be nice. And, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to just go and just come out and and call her like that. Because, you know, I know how when you do that to, you know, on them type of levels, it could be, you know, very you know, like dangerous and serious to them too. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want Mm -hmm. them to, I didn't want them to feel uncomfortable. So I had to get them to feel comfortable. And so, um, I tried to get her to change. She changed a little, but she didn't change a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, that was mm-hmm. really, really nice about that, that she did change a little because, you know, she was really, you know, doing some stuff. And then it was one little young guy when I was on the underground. You had heard us when he was about, like, 21. Mm-hmm. He came down there, and this was, like, a really nice one. I loved that one. He was he come down there, he's crying, and Miss Martha he said, uh, I need to I need you to I need to ask you something and so I said, uh, what what you wanna ask me? He said that he was you know, he was gay. And mm-hmm. uh he said that he wanna have children and I said, um, why do you feel like you're gay? He said, everybody tell him he's gay. And so I mm-hmm. looked at him and I said, Well sweetie, he said, But he don't really wanna be gay, but people tell him so much that he think he is. That's what he told me. Mm. He said he don't want to be, mm-hmm. but see, they think he is, and then he just go ahead. I said, sweetheart, listen. I said, you was born with a mother and a father, so you got both of the DNA. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. See, when you mm-hmm. came here on this earth, when you made a choice, you made a choice to be a male. But you have 
you're very sensitive, and there's nothing wrong with you being sensitive. You know what I'm saying? Some people are stronger, some people are weak, and you're sensitive, and you're not you a man. If you go home and look at yourself in the mirror, you're a man. You got everything the man's supposed to have. You know, you you don't have a cycle. You know, women have cycles. You know, mm-hmm. you a male. You know, you have your private part and everything, and it's, right. it's a man's part. It's not a woman's part. So I said, what I want you to do, I want you to go home and I want you to really look at yourself in the mirror. Because I said, through your eyes, they always say, through your eyes, it's your your soul. Mm -hmm. So look in Mm -hmm. your eyes and just stare at yourself in the mirror and just ask God, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to be a male or female? Okay, Okay. so he did it. And so like a week later, he come down there smiling. He was looking like glowing up a little. See, first he looked kind of like Mm -hmm. gloomy a little bit. But when he came down mm-hmm. there then, he was glowing up, and he was walking with a female waving at me. And I was like, oh, hi. I was just happy to see him. And that was like mm-hmm. a miracle. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like he found himself. You know, it's it's nothing wrong with people being confused like that. You know, they are. When you come here, that's you make that choice to be who you are. And, you know, you just have to be able yeah. to know how to deal with it. You know, like a woman, she's strong. That don't mean that she has to be a man. That means that she's a strong woman. You know, well, the, the thing that I would say, the hmm. thing that I know is that most times, I think most times when people, what people don't realize when they go to sit down with a psychic or when they choose not to sit down with a psychic is that mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, it is going to just confirm something for you that you already mm-hmm. knew or felt that you were doubting about. You know, they'll say, well, is this the man for me? Is this relationship going to work? And I feel that's almost like if you hire a private detective to see if <laughs> your mate is cheating on you, you already know your mate mm-hmm. is cheating on you. You're just asking for confirmation. <laughs> and nine times out of ten, it's the same thing with, you know, you're right. I, I, my guys have been telling me, my angels have been telling me to leave that job or go for this uh-huh. or go for that, and the psychic reading will confirm it for you. you Amen. I mean? It showed me uh, what it will. I'm <laughs> telling you, they can pick up on it like that. They can pick up on mm-hmm. it. And see, like, when I seen him, he, you know, I'm looking at him, I'm looking like he's a nice-looking male. And, you know, when I looked at him, Joy, he was a nice little young guy. And, you mm-hmm. know, people were telling him that. And see, sometimes if you keep on telling people things, they are kind of like believe it. Mm-hmm. And see, he mm-hmm. said father was calling him that. Everybody was calling him that. And that's why he thought he was like that, because, you know, he acted so sensitive. Mm-hmm. And I can imagine a child who was sensitive like you, if her classmates or people started mm-hmm. saying, you're a witch, then or something <laughs> no. negative or scary, mm-hmm. then it would drive her to find comfort, you know, to say, well, you know what, you reject me, and I will then, if you say that's what I am and that what I'm doing is negative, whereas they might not have ever explored a darker side of their gifts because they were Mm -hmm. told. This is witchy, witchy witchy stuff, you know. And I've heard people (laughs) say that now. You know, I have events Mm -hmm. every month in the Atlanta station or or every other month um, called Elevation Uh Station, and it's a half metaphysical fair where you can get products and services like uh, crystals Mm -hmm. and oils and incense and books, and the other half is psychic readers. And I have Uh a lot of people who are like, well, I just don't know about all that, you know. And then I have other people who come (laughs) from church that are like, hey, I'm coming after church. I'll be there to get the second half of my (laughs) spiritual message for the day. But I have others who are are like, you know, I, I don't want to open myself up to anything is uh-huh. what I hear a lot. Now, do you have like protective <laughs> measures that you have learned to do for yourself um, to kind of govern, or are you just kind of naturally protected because of how God gave your gift to you? It's a little both of it, Joelle. See, what I do, mm-hmm. I, I do spiritual, you know, like I did a Campbell's because, see, I was raised a Catholic, so we burned candles all the time. And so some people mm-hmm. say, well, candles are not right, Joelle. They burn candles mm-hmm. for the birthday. 
So I'm looking right. like <laughs> the key, <laughs> it's only just the stuff that's right. really useful too. They help them to meditate. You know what I'm saying? Right. But they go to these extremes and stuff like that. And even in the Bible, see, they go and say, "Well, this is not supposed to be in the Bible." See, when I use the tarot cards, it's just for a tool. I don't really need the cards, but I use them just to help me relax. I can pick up a pencil and just hold the pencil and just read a person. Just see, mm-hmm. it's just like I have to have my mind focused on something else mm-hmm. other than them because if I focus on them, I'll be picking up all of their their stuff, and I don't want to mm-hmm. pick up on all that stuff. See, some of it I'll be picking up mm-hmm. on, like um, their their boyfriend might be doing this. Like one girl, I was talking to her on the phone one day, and I said, oh, my God, Wendy. She said, what's wrong? I said, I see your man, and he's looking. Um, he, now, this what I said. It was so weird. I said, he's um. He's having a party with some friends of his, and they're having a bunch of women over. Mm-hmm. And Joelle, they was doing some things, and I mm-hmm. never met her man, right? And so she said, mm-hmm. well, how do you know that's true? I said, do we have this sofa, like an army-like color green quilt or something mm-hmm. is over the sofa? She said, yes. I said, well, this, this is your man. I said, this is mm-hmm. what's going on. But he lives in another mm-hmm. state and everything, and they were kind of broke up and everything, but... You know, they were over a smoking mm-hmm. pot, you know, bunch of women mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And she found out that it was really going on. And I said, I hate to have told you that, but you need to know. And mm-hmm. you make your decision how you want to deal with it. Right. And so you see what I'm saying? I mean, when I, when camp, hmm? I was just well, sitting I there looking at the camp. it's a big responsibility, you know. It's mm-hmm. a big responsibility because, like you said, you – You know, I know some psychics who just will not talk about a person's passing or death moment. They may see it, but they are Mm -hmm. just not, and they don't feel like it's necessarily even meant to share. It's just part of their conversation with God, not Mm -hmm. for the the person to necessarily know uh, in that Mm -hmm. moment. I mean, it's a lot of responsibility because you've got extra powers than that you Mm -hmm. You have to walk around with and behave ethically and and uh-huh. morally. You know, I That's tell people all the time, don't take it lightly because you're doing work. <laughs> you know, uh, it has a, a karmic return on that work as well. If you were not using your gifts ethically, then it could be <laughs> taken away, or you know, Amen. you'll have to pay a return on it at some point <laughs> later as well. <laughs> But see, you know, when, it, when, they, when the death thing come up, see what happened. Here's what I try to tell the people about the death when I try to tell them I see death. I try to tell them that they need to make peace with the person before they go. That's the part, right. That's the purpose of me telling them about the death so they can, if it's someone, one of their loved ones, they can say, well, look, I, if I'm seeing the loved one pass, you need to go and make peace with them and say your goodbyes to them and everything like that because some people don't get a chance to even say goodbye mm-hmm. to people. And then they be saying, oh, my God, I wish I could have known I could have said that. So that's the reason a lot of times when I try to tell them about I see the death so they can go and make some type of preparation, make some peace on right. that so they can say their goodbyes. Now, and to me, now, I, if somebody's going to go, I don't want to say goodbye to them. I don't want to just, right, you know, let right. them go and then, you know, because it, it'll be on me. To, I could have said something to them before they left. I told them that I was sorry, I love them, something. You could do something mm-hmm, before they go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, um, in your readings, do you use the gift of mediumship? Do you communicate with people's loved ones during a reading session? I do if somebody, if they do come to me. See, it's like it just come to me automatically because see I talk mm-hmm. with, you know, angels, Joe, I talk right. with aliens. Right. You know, people say, Oh you I talk with aliens, I see them all the time, I promise you. So mm-hmm. if if whatever mm-hmm. come up in the reading, I give them that, that message. But I just don't right. go out and just say, do like well, I'm going to do a seance where I'm just looking for this to happen because I don't do that. Right. I just let it come to me naturally. Right. And you know, mm-hmm. and they you know, from what I understand, they'll say, well, every medium is psychic, but not every psychic is a medium. So your mm-hmm. gifts and your visions and your abilities may be strictly angelic and extra dimensional or extraterrestrial, but not loved ones, mm-hmm. like discarnate uh, spirits who mm-hmm. used to be in flesh who have not, you know, either in heaven or not yet in heaven. 
And, you know, I mm-hmm. don't uh, mm-hmm. claim to be a medium. I keep hearing in readings that that gift is coming, you know what I'm saying? But I don't feel prepared, honestly, right now, you know, just hearing the things that I hear and having the dreams that I have is enough for me to kind of understand the process right now. And uh, so, but I have several friends who've been on the show who are doing more medium work in terms of helping people achieve peace with loved ones who they have not reconciled that death moment. And they they say that it's very emotional. It can be very, especially if there's been something like a murder or a sudden passing or a car yeah. accident or something. But that is very mm-hmm. rewarding, though, to see that peace be given to the loved one who's been grieving so hard and that spirit get more mm-hmm. rest in the afterlife as well. Do you find mm-hmm. that to mm-hmm. be, be more emotional yeah. work than your typical kind of reading? I found it. It's, it's really when I, okay. So Say like when it when the spirits when the other side you know the people that's on the when they talk to me and everything, I found mm-hmm. it like intriguing because see, I be like, in a way I be kind of happy that they took upon to talk to me, you know, mm-hmm. they peaceful and everything that you know to help me to find like some of them be like if it's somebody been murdered and everything, and I be mm-hmm. happy that they chose me to you know to help them to get you know, the, the, the case solved, whatever. So it's it's like, to me, it's okay. Now, sometimes I have, like, a negative thing come up. Like, it was, um, I would see, like, spirits, like, demonic spirits sometimes, and mm-hmm. um, looking at me real mean and hateful. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. looking like, okay, I know why you do it, because you're mad at me, but, you know, I don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay just like I am, and I'm going to do what I'm doing. And then I tell them I rebuke them, and then they'll, you know, go away, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it's like if I was, like, weak, you know, they probably could get a lot accomplished, but might be being more of aware of it and stuff like that now, and mm-hmm. it don't really bother me like it used to. It used to bother me a lot. That's people's number one fears, I think, because movies have made that, you know, you'll see things like where they, they're they like, you brought a spirit back with you or you got a demonic <laughs> attachment. And um, mm-hmm. I, I don't discount anything. I, like, I don't start mm-hmm. at a position of, well, that's not true. So if you say, well, you know, mm-hmm. I, I speak with extraterrestrials, I'm like, that mm-hmm. it could absolutely be true because, because here's a person who's telling me this is their truth. So it's not something I read in the book. It's a person I verbally talk with, and I can see their reality of their experience. So if you tell me mm-hmm. you saw a demonic spirit, you know, spirit, then I'm like, hey, who am I yep. to say that that does not mm-hmm. exist? And to yeah. me, if you mm-hmm. say something doesn't exist, then you're limiting the ability of creation to create. Mm-hmm. Just because you Amen. can't see it in your framework, you know. But I, that's not yeah. to say I need I don't I don't need any of those things to come validate themselves to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I try to protect <laughs> myself. <doing> listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, girl, you have to burn some sage. That's what I'll be telling everybody. Get some sage and burn some see sage, get rid of evil spirit. See when they come around mm-hmm. you like that, you just go and get the sage <laughs> and then you just, you know, start praying and say, Go back to where you came from. I don't need you to, to give me nothing. I I want you to just, you know, do whatever you normally would do, and it just ignore me because, you know, I got my mind on something else. Right, right. <laughs> so you have to really right. talk your body to, like, change you out of that energy. <laughs> well, because, see, I'll a lot of times it'd be different levels. It be, see, it'd be the mm-hmm. levels that you'd be on. See, like, okay, say like this. If you see something like that, see, it's really there, but it could be, like, on another level. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. See, you be mm-hmm. thinking it's right there, but it's really not. Right, right. You feel, okay, say like if you in a room, see this, you know, like, see, I guess what they see and see is dimensions is on this earth, you mm-hmm. know, but they're not really talking about it. See, when you see these things, it's really there, but see, it's, it's be like on another dimension. Right, you right. You see what I'm saying? And, and it's, it's that's the reason why it, you really, you know, it can't really harm you because it's like, mm-hmm. um, uh, it, 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 see, like when I seen, uh, like I was, like I was saying about the aliens. When the, um, mm-hmm. I seen the alien, 
and he woke me up. He actually woke me up, touched me, woke me up. It was uh, Mm -hmm. either angel or alien, but the thing of it is, he had this long robe on, and Mm -hmm. the next thing you know, he took me for a ride in a spaceship. Actually, okay. I was in a spaceship. Look, Joy, a two-seater, as a matter of fact. Oh, <laughs> so okay. And I'm looking like we went all the way around, Joy. That was funny. We went all the way around mm-hmm. the whole world, and then he took me mm-hmm. out in space. When he took me out in space, I can't remember. But the next thing you know, I remember coming back in space and coming for a landing, and then I woke up. But, see, I know oh. that it was like the astro travel game because it happened to me before. See, yeah. when, when when I be like at, like, uh, at the Hoot Owl, John Dare, John Henderson, he told me, you know, mm-hmm. he, the aura, um, he do the, the reading when, when they reach your aura. See, he mm-hmm. said that yeah. he could tell that, yeah, I have, um, you know, the angels, uh, the spiritual guys, mm-hmm. they come and get me and they teach me mm-hmm. while I'm sleeping. So I do know that that happens. So that's the reason why I was saying it'd be like a lot of that astral projection because they teach me. They be um, mm-hmm. showing me different things, so that's what happens when uh, you have your dreams like that. They, it's like they are trying to show you some things. So, you know, a lot of people shouldn't really get too scared of the, in their dreams because it's only a dream in a way, but it's showing you some things that's happening, mm-hmm. like preparing your body, preparing you for stuff when you in your waking hours. I put it that way. Yes. Yes. It, you know, I I think it's so exciting that we're able to have conversations like this because if you would have gone back, say, 500 years ago and you were uh-huh. to tell a person that something <laughs> like uh, the dodo bird existed, they would be like, shut, shut up. There's no such thing as that, right? But fast yes. forward four or 500 years later, then we oh. say, you know what, that is accepted fact. And so they say that we really have knowledge almost as unto children about uh-huh. how w- the world really works. And that it's the mature angelics and alien races and stuff that have the larger perspective, almost like of an adult to a child, mm-hmm. and that we are Amen. slowly being led through our like being in school, that we're going through yep. elementary school to junior high, Amen. and eventually we will be knowledgeable enough, A, not to harm the other beings that are out there. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Like little kids, they, they fight and hurt each other because they don't have an awareness of, you know, you don't bite your classmate because when they bite back, it doesn't feel good, you know? But as we get <laughs> spiritual spiritual maturity and come to understanding that we're not to harm each other, then we are revealed more and brought into the higher dimensions of angelic energy and alien peaceful energy Mm -hmm. and things like that. And I'm glad that we're in this time, you know, right now, uh, that we can have this knowledge, you know what I mean? So I know because you know what? So wonderful. Amen, sweetie, because you know what happened. See, that's what I try to tell a lot of people. See, them angels are not going to go around when you're acting negative. They're going to come around when you, when, see, because they want to feel, see, they love, right? They love and they're about love, and they want to come around peaceful. They don't want to come around with no crazy stuff, and you have to be more open to them, and that's when they come around and show you. Because if, if you're doing all this old negative stuff around, they're not going to come around. Because right, they, they want right. to be a part, just like you were just saying. See, they want to come around and teach you and show you, and that's what they tr- they've been trying to do for us for the longest. But you know, it, we don't want to listen. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they've been trying. They've yeah. been working with us all right. through generations. Mm-hmm. And that's like, one thing I mm-hmm. have learned is they say that you have you would be blown away if the veil could be taken from your eyes and you would become aware of how truly many angels and loved ones are gathered around you in every present moment. You would not be able Amen. to really contain your joy, but you have to <laughs> ask. You have not because Amen. you ask not. So you say, you know, angels, please help me today with the things I know about and help me with 
the things that I don't even see coming yet. You have my Amen. permission to act on my behalf out of loving energy because you are wiser and have better vision than me, you know. So, that's uh, true, sweetie. That's true. That is definitely true. See, they do more of that, and everything will be peaceful and put out a lot of more love instead of putting out a lot of hatred. Mm-hmm. And being, you know, because you know what happened to this? this I got to tell you something. Okay. Just like, uh, what was it? The King, um, King Tut? When, uh, which mm-hmm. one was the one that, uh, that uh, built the pyramid so he can bury everybody with him? <laughs> and so well, he even his gold and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't remember him though, but see what they did, sweetie. They buried all, everybody there, uh, Cuckabobs, everybody, the slaves and everything, they buried everybody in there right. in, them t- in them tombs. And they did that because they see it on the other side so they can have everything with them. But I, but mm-hmm. it's still there, it's still there, and they didn't even get a chance to take it with them. And that's why right. they said this stuff is just materialistic, it's, it's not real. Right. Even though right. we have to be here, you know, but it's not really real. It's just something that right. we hear on this earth, and and it, just like you said, when they, if they take off the veil and see all this other stuff, they would like, man, right. I didn't even know this stuff well, exists. Right, and it's density. It's heavy things. Gold is heavy. Tables, chairs, rings. The, the body is material. It's heavy. Our souls are light. They're energy. Amen. You know? Amen. Now, you remember what they said? Now your dad. Let me tell you, your dad is a, a preach, right? A preacher. Mm-hmm. You remember they mm-hmm. said, "The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you know that saying. <laughs> That's right, what I'm saying. Yeah. See, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is so weak. Yes. Now, mm-hmm. I want to get your opinion about the times that we are in right now. You know, there is a lot mm-hmm. of feeling of uh, panic and negativity. Um, there is a lot of church teaching right now that says this is, you know, a time to be concerned about. Um, Mm -hmm. But I've also heard as many teachings that say, you know, it is actually a time that's necessary before things get better. Are you feeling Mm -hmm. like we are in a terrible time or a birthing time or like what's your read on society around the globe today? Today, Joelle, I feel like God is preparing us to go through a transformation and this transformation, to me, is like, you know, see, when when Trump, you know, when they said he, you know, he's going to be president, right? This is what, you know, I was feeling that he was going to be bringing on a lot of, you know, negativity. You know, it mm-hmm. wasn't it wasn't good, and it's like he was preparing a way for, you know, the antichrist. You know, whatever mm-hmm. you know, the stuff that's supposed to happen. So mm-hmm. I kind of feel like, you know, God is gonna really—he's getting everything organized so He can come and do what he, He's gonna do. I don't feel like it's gonna continue going on more and more. Like it's because for one thing, the reason why I feel like it's doing that because they got it now. What He's saying that you can serve God or the devil. You know, there's some places like that. Uh, this guy, he's trying to teach children in the after-school program about it's okay if they accept the devil. Then they got all this mm-hmm. other different type of negative stuff that's happening. So I kind of feel like it's just getting prepared for, you know, you know, the world to be, I guess, transformed into, right, you know, right. what God is going to do to it. Because right. it's like when they were doing the 2012 thing, I really didn't think it was time because they see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see this man come, you know, the blonde haired blue eyed man, know that the time is near. Now, that's mm-hmm. what, mm-hmm. you know, that's why I knew that he was going to be elected. Right, right. So well, I know like that I... It's something coming. Hmm? Well, I was, I feel, I guess my feeling is hmm? that. The time of revelation that's talked about in the Bible, I don't think it's like necessarily the literal way that people interpret it, but we are now seeing what we have done and what we have allowed 
to happen Mm -hmm. on this planet, and until you see Mm -hmm. it, you can't fix Mm -hmm. it. And so we're getting to see. Mm -hmm. But everything is happening. See, it's just like, see, the earth is being real heavy. It's like it's getting weight. The weight is getting real heavy. It's getting heavy with the negativity that they're doing, and it's getting heavy Mm -hmm. with the stuff that they're doing to the earth. They abusing the mm-hmm. earth, mm-hmm. so it's weighing. That's why we're getting all mm-hmm. these mud, uh, mud slides, sinkholes, all of this stuff is like weighing, and even mm-hmm. it's splitting, you know, under the earth. So what I'm trying to say is like I feel like we really living in the last days, but I ain't saying it's gonna happen right now. But I know it's near. Yeah. I put it that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I don't think this is gonna continue going on like this. You know, but see, good for the for the doing right, so we don't have nothing to worry about. It's just <laughs> for the people that's not doing right, so we we protect it because we're trying to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, so long as you're putting that good, good. Hmm? you don't have to worry about anything if you're you're no. putting out the positivity and the love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you protect it. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been and such an interesting conversation. I'm so excited. I have to stop myself because we already said at the beginning of the show that we would have no problem talking to each other for a couple of hours, but we've got several callers who've been yeah. We've got several callers who've been holding throughout this show that do want to ask you questions here in a few moments and I do want to get okay. to that. But before we transition to that part, is there any other thing about your life and your journey that you would like our listeners to know or take away from our conversation this evening? Um, the, um, the only thing that I would really, really like and everything like that, um, that, um, you know, for the listeners to know and everything, it's just like try to um, try to do the right thing right now and try to think more of that positive energy just trying to talk to you to let you know the right thing to do. Don't doubt it mm-hmm. because, see, when you doubt it, you end up missing out the blessings you can receive. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Try, try to do the right thing because it's hard sometimes, but, you know, Think of that positive energy, just that loving energy that's trying to get you to do it then. Don't think of the one that's saying, no, don't do it. <laughs> just go and, you right. know, like they show you when they show the good and the bad angel on the side of your shoulder, and they said, do mm-hmm. this, do that. And then I'm going to say, no, don't do it, don't do it. Think of the positive mm-hmm. one because you know what? You never go wrong. You don't have nothing to worry about if you do the right thing. You know, right. Your back is clean. <laughs> You're good. Right, right? You can right. lay down and go to sleep right. at night. You don't have to worry about, you know, having these nightmares of, you know, things that you could have did. Right, right. You know, that's the only thing I can really say for right now because it's just so much going on in this world, and and it just has to be healed. Now, for people healed, who are, Absolutely, and love is the balm that heals all wounds, you know. Um, Amen. Now, for people who want to contact you for private readings, they don't have to be living in the Atlanta area because I know you talk to people all over the world. So how can people contact you to get a private reading? To get a private reading, they call me at 404-838-3999. And I can set up an appointment, and they can get a private reading. And they got and my you website have a there. Website too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the website is ladympsychic.net. Uh, they can um, look me up there, or with whichever you know they decide. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Well, I know I've had that number in my phone for quite some years, so, you know, uh, um, I'm appreciative of you coming on the show this evening. And you have agreed to do some mini readings for the callers who are who wanted to call in tonight. Now, we do ask that this is a really a one-question reading. If you want a private reading, please do contact her. And, of course, you are aware that your reading will be happening live on the air, so, 
uh, I appreciate the callers who are willing to do that, but let's also understand <laughs> that, you know, uh, your bedroom business, you might not want to be out in the world if this is that kind of reading, you know. But um, uh, did you have any other kind of parameters or guidelines that you wanted to give callers before we start putting them on the line? Uh, not really for right now and everything. I'm I'm fine. I said because I really got a lot. You 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 know let me get a lot out to talk to them and stuff like that. And it's it's fine. It's fine. And it's, okay. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, excellent. And well, I will I'll, be uh, opening up an office pretty soon too. <laughs> so oh, you be will able to come for in the office and see, Yes, I'll be doing. Uh, they'll be able to come in, but it won't be until after my birthday. I'm trying to wait till after my birthday because you know every time a birthday come in, it's a new level, and so I really want to yeah. wait till then. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do doing like to start <laughs> stuff around our birthday. It's a whole month of celebration for me, but it really is. Amen. Amen. Yeah, sweetie pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, our first caller this evening, I'll go ahead and start bringing callers on. And so our first person who has been holding for since before the show started is D.D. D.D., thank you for calling the Psychic Inside Show. You're on with Miss Martha. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you. Good evening. You're welcome. Good evening, sweetie. Now, what's your name again? It's D.D. <laughs> D.D.? Yes. Okay, Miss Titi. Now, give me your birthday, sweetie. October twenty-seven, nineteen seventy-six. Nineteen seventy-six. Now, what's your question? I want to know uh, what is my my life purpose? Like, what what am I here in this lifetime to do? Okay, what are you here to do? Okay, wait a minute. Let me see. Okay, there's ten. There's twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay, with you, sweetie, you are six. And see, this is uh, a one year, so this is a real spiritual time for you. So that's the reason why you're really into what you're supposed to be doing right now. You know, um, a lot of times when you are six and stuff like that, um, it could be different types of stuff. You know, you're Scorpio and you're six. So it could be two different things. You can handle two different things. So you don't have to limit yourself. You know, uh, what do you do for a living? Right now I take care of uh, mental and physical disabled adults. Okay. And then not, it's nothing else that you've been doing? No. I've been doing that you for You haven't like did nothing in the past? Years. That's what I'm saying. But what were you doing before that when you were younger? I've been doing that for 16 years. Okay, sweetie, listen to Cindy. What were you doing when oh. you were younger? Because you were born in 1976, so you, I know you passed 16 years. So that's what I'm saying, sweetie. Um, like younger, like... Um, were you doing something creative or something? No, no. That's what, Okay, what were you doing before you did this? Because I see something else around you. Um, I used to do fast foods. Um, um, I went to school for medical assistant. Mhm. Okay, that was it, really. Assistant. Yeah. Yeah, medical assistant. And um, so that's the reason why. See, right here, by you being a Scorpio, right? You've been a doctor, so you might be wanting to get like a center. You know, have you been wanting to do something like getting something like a center to help the people? Because you have healing abilities around you. That has crossed my mind. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Huh? I said, yes, that has crossed my mind. Yes, it has. Okay. Well, that's what you should be doing your research on, sweetie, because even seven is a spiritual number was got to do with, with healing, too. So if I were you, you got 16 years of that you know, degree, and so what I would do and everything, I would do researching and trying to get um, something got to do where you can uh, either make it more easier for you so you won't have to do a lot on yourself. You can get other people to work for you to where you can really sit back and get ready for retirement because you did a lot for 16 years. Mm-hmm. And so yes. it's, yeah, and so you deserve, you got enough experience to where you can go and do, like, they got these business plans and they give them grants to where you can get, um, 
you know, start doing your research and look around and try to uh, find you something where, like, buildings where you can organize to get you a little, you know, like a little clinic. I mean, a little uh, medical um, where you can have older people there, uh, helping people. You know, like a Elders. nursing home or something. Okay. Have okay. you been thinking about that? Yes. Okay, but well, let me tell you something. To, uh-huh. Let me tell you, stop waiting. Go and do it. October is coming up, the 27th, and you heard me what I said. After your birthday, you want to start doing things. Do your research and start putting your business plan down to where you can get what you want. And don't let yourself hold yourself back. You know, start, like God say, if you put one foot here, put two. Go ahead and put your foot forward so God can help you on the rest. And that, was okay. that okay for you? Yes, it was. Yeah. You know, you got the cord here that says seek and you should find. That's the cord that you got. Okay. Okay. Did I help you okay? Yes, you did. Okay, sweetie. Okay. <laughs> so you take care. Thank you, thank you, thank you for holding and listening this evening. I appreciate your support. And please do call back to the show if you wind up <laughs> doing something with this information and share your success or journey because uh, we always love to hear follow-ups. <laughs> so hey, man, I sure love to you. Good luck to you, sweetie. Thanks. Thank you. Blessings to you all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Well. Thank you. Yes, it's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> now, our, our next caller, I believe that I have, do I still have uh, Clarinetta on the line? Yeah, yes, Clarinetta. That's my little bitty goddaughter. <laughs> yes, I'm still here. <laughs> yes, welcome. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> I'm well, you, you are on the line. <laughs> well, hello, Mama M. How are you? Hey, baby. How you doing? Enjoying listening to this evening. Oh, I'm doing I okay. Really I, I, I know, I, I'm doing fine, baby. I said to myself, I said, um, if you get a chance to talk to me, I said, I'm going to give you a good one tonight. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, whatever you see for me. I don't care what that the whole world can know. <laughs> okay, sweetie pie. Okay, I know your birthday, you Aquarius, you're 216, 1970, uh-huh. what is it, 72? 74. Uh, 70, 74, okay, 74. Let's see, it's showing right here, oh, sweetie, it's showing that you uh-huh. are definitely going to be, you're going to be getting the things you want. It said in the past you've been confused. You're confused okay. about some things, but it says okay. things are changing for you. You're going to start. It's it's like you're making your dream come true. This is your oh, time that's... to make oh, things that's... happen. It is. And it says you are going to accomplish it. It's showing you are going to accomplish it. It says you got strong legs here. And as long as you okay. got your strong legs, you are going to go out and get what you want. And this is the time okay. to do it. <laughs> okay. And, okay. It, and it's showing the world court. And see, sweetie, when it show the world court, it's showing that uh-huh. it is going to happen. It's going to happen for you. Uh huh. Okay. You're going to get your power back. And it oh. says within four months, you're going to see a lot of changes, uh-huh. a lot of changes for the Ooh. better. Thank you. Lord. You're gonna know Thank that they change. You welcome. Ooh. You're gonna know that the changes happen. And it says that you're doing some spiritual things for yourself. And it says that's gonna work too. Everything is gonna work. And the people that's doing the gossip and everything about you, they just uh-huh. jealous. They just jealous. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so just ignore them. It's like they okay. see you coming out and get ready to accomplish some things, and they don't okay. want you to accomplish it, so they try to put doubt, like me and Joel was talking about, when they try to put okay. doubt in your mind, they're trying to put doubt mm-hmm. so you won't succeed. So don't let them do that to you. Okay. All right. Well, they can't, yeah. as long as I talk to my mama and him, they can't stop me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they, can't, Amen. they can't stop me. They can't Amen. Stop me. Amen, sweetie. And you sure you want to ask anything else? Oh, I just I'm just overwhelmed. I'm like I'm like whatever you see to me because one thing I certainly know and can check for. If you tell me, it will form. It has never never not come true. So if you just tell what you told me gonna happen. I know it's going to happen. Sit back and wait on it, and I will call back to let y'all know. 
Thank you. You never, ever, ever <laughs> told me something that it didn't come to. Thank well, you, thank you. I wanted to ask <laughs> you, how long uh-huh. how long have you been seeing uh, Miss Martha? Um, I've been seeing Miss Martha for at least, what, about 15 years? Yes. Oh, I've wow. been, uh, I met her randomly at a gap. I had never known anything about spiritual healing. I grew up in... Um, a Presbyterian church had never ever, and and she told me that my aura just drew me to her, and I just drew her to me, and she just started talking to me, and she began to tell me about my life, things that I didn't even. She confirmed things to me that I didn't even know myself. That you know things mm-hmm. that I thought occurred, but I wasn't exactly certain. But you know it was like, and over the years, everything she's ever told me has come has come true. Amen. Amen. Everything. I mean, you know, both the passing of my father. She gave me months, you know, earlier to make peace with it. And, you know, and because, you know, he was in ICU and, you know, and I was just devastating because my father was so prevalent in my life. Mm-hmm. And she was like, baby, he's not going to go right now. You, you, um, I think you told me three months later he was going to go. And he died exactly. Three months later, mm-hmm. from the day that she told me, and it gave me time to make that peace, to make that he- and he was an I And you know, when he Amen. came out of it, just like she said he was going to, he walked out of that hospital, and th- he lived three more months. I mean, even to my mm-hmm. son, I had, you know, um, she told me I lost touch with her, and she told me prior to me having my son that she said in two years you're gonna have a you're gonna have a son. And I had my son exactly two years to that day. It was I had a cesarean, so it was a little couple of days off from that, but it was still the two years that I wound up having him. Um, I talked to her in April, and she told me in two years I was going to have a son, and I had him March 25th. And that's because they took him early, on a few days from being April 1st, because April 1st was my due date. I had not talked to her in, in years. I mean, that's just so many things. I mean, she told me about... Obama being elected before he was everybody else in the world was going, oh, he's not going to sit. She told me he was going to be elected, and she said he's going to serve two terms. And he did, even with Trump. I mean, she told me that, because I can admit, my little feelings were hurt when she told me that um, Trump was going to win. And I said, you know, well, I, well, if she said it, I know what's going to happen. So I smiled <laughs> on the bed, and everybody else in the world was still up. Why did she get back? Honestly, and I woke up before she had won because she said it. And I was like, I, I don't ever doubt her because when she tells you right. something, it's true. I mean, and I mean, you know, and she will tell you the good with the bad. Now, you know, I can't Amen. say that, you know, this, I, this is a good reading and I like this one, but, you know, I, there have been reasons that, you know, hurt my feelings. But I knew, that, you know, she was telling me so I could embrace it and accept it because it was going to take Amen. place. So. I might as well, you know, she said it. You just like, you know, you write that down. That's been to happen. And, I mean, over the well, I, years that I've her, I've never had her tell me anything that did not take place. Amen. Well, I appreciate <laughs> you and your experience. You. That's part you. of our purpose of this show is to let yeah. people see what is out there and how people have these gifts and abilities and how people's lives yeah, I mean, are shaped and benefited by it. So thank yeah. you so much for coming on. And oh, well, we've got a few more well, callers well, to get to, and I hope you'll stick okay. on for the rest of the show. Well, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> bye, baby. <laughs> Okay, I bye. gave you a little okay. kiss, baby. Love you. Oh, love, love you, Anita. Bye-bye. Love okay, bye bye. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> She's so dear. She's oh, really my. sweet. She got a beautiful Thanks voice. She's a singer. I want her to sing. Oh, That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, she got a beautiful voice. <laughs> well, I love that huh? she was able to, you know, contribute uh, her personal experience in Thank this. You. And I, I had she had come on the show very early, and so I, I was, I knew that she wanted to at least say hi because she said she was <laughs> not going to miss your show. So I'm glad to bring her on. And I also Thank have you, a man. caller who just wants to speak with you for a moment. He doesn't really have a question, but who are we speaking with? This is Marcus Howell. <laughs> Hi, Marcus. <laughs> hey, Marcus. 
<laughs> Marcus is a wonderful clairvoyant and psychic. He's actually the author of the book I told you about that also is a very God focused uh you know, God gave me my gifts and abilities. So I'm so glad you were able to tune in this evening, Marcus. <laughs> yes, I've been listening in. It's so great to hear you guys and um uh, of course, us Libras just have to be acknowledged and, and respected <laughs> all over the world. <laughs> Team Libra, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marcus, well, so Marcus, you want me to go ahead. <laughs> So you want to get a reading, too? No, 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 no. I was telling Joel uh, when I called in, I was saying uh, that I, I really enjoyed listening to the show. And I was going to oh, okay. come in and say hi earlier and say, you know, you guys are doing a great job. And I really connect with you because growing up clairvoyant myself um, in the church oh. and having mm-hmm. those experiences and then getting to my, my wonderful debates with, with Christians and, and, and having, you know, some <laughs> in-depth conversations and things, I kind of like saw a lot of stuff that you shared with and experienced. And I just want to say that, you know, I really understand and see where you're coming from and, but um, I like how you explain things and how you break it down. So to to me, it was like thank just you. a really great conversation. I just wanted to say congrats. Oh my God! Thank you so much for the compliment. Oh, and welcome. I hope to meet you too. I hope to meet you too. You yes, like absolutely. Well, thank you, I like Marcus. to be around a lot of spiritual people. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Marcus, for coming on this evening, right. and I'll have you tuning in the rest of the show. Thank you. All right, you guys have. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I might have cut you off a little bit there. Now, Marcus has been on a previous episode of the show, and you can catch his uh, story on the YouTube channel as well. And he's also written a book about his life. And so uh, that sharing is just such a wonderful thing because, like you said, you, you're you never alone in your journey in life. And if there's anything you know is if you open your mouth and start sharing with others, Somebody will share back with you, and you will realize that you have more in common than you don't, you know. So Thank you. Thank you. That's true, sweetie. That is so true. Mm-hmm. Now, so we, true. Have Tiffany, we have Tiffany on the line who's been holding. You have a question for Miss Martha this evening, Tiffany. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do have a question, but um, like the young lady who called before, I am a longtime client of Martha Rivers. <laughs> so, oh. um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just wanted to call in and, um, you know, get a mini reading and show support <laughs> for my spiritual advisor and my fairy godmother because without Miss Martha, things would be all over the place in haywire. Thank you, sweetie. This is another one of my little beauty god doors. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> and that is fact and everything. She, uh, she's, um, the Tiffany, honey, she's, she's something. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she got, uh, she's a Libra too. That's what I'm saying. She's a Libra too. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, she's a Libra. <laughs> and that's why I was saying that, um, yeah, she got a lot of good stuff that's coming her way, a whole bunch of stuff. Because she's been a very well uh, student, I'm telling you. She has. And she learned a lot, and she's accomplished a whole lot. She's, um, she's like, got a lot of stuff coming her way with the wedding coming up for her. Mm-hmm. And uh, people trying to... Let me listen, people try to stop her from getting married. Yeah. <laughs> her, her ex try to come in and stop her. <laughs> try to break up her marriage. <laughs> you know how sometimes when they when you try to wait and then they don't do right, but then when you leave them alone, they want you. So mm-hmm. uh, that's what, yeah, she's dealing with a lot of that. But she's got a lot of beautiful stuff coming her way too, a lot of peace coming her way. Everything is just like folding for her whole bunch of stuff folding did for her. Good did you stuff. have a, yeah, a lot question, of... Tiffany, or did you just uh, want whatever uh, is, comes through for you? Well, I, just whatever comes through is fine. You sure? Are you sure? Well, yeah, yeah, I'm positive, very okay. positive. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And it says right here, it's showing that... Um, yeah, you uh you got victory around you too, victory. You got um it's like seven days, seven weeks and seven months. It's showing that you're gonna be walking away with everything that you want. It looks mm-hmm. like you're holding it. 
you go and um you see the Statue of Liberty in New York. <laughs> right. How they standing mm-hmm. up there? You know, you know mm-hmm. the statue has stand up there with the torch. Right. That that look like you walking away with everything you got. Mm-hmm. You know, you're gonna okay. attain everything you want. You're gonna be happy victoriously. It looks okay. like it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, your baby here too. It's showing uh, three people. So it's showing uh, you will have your husband and your baby. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't see you having more than more than. Um, more than two children. Well, one, I feel like it's just only one because I don't see you having any more. It's your choice. If you want more, you could have it. But I just okay. see one little child there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it looked like to me that um, you're going to make your fantasy come true and everything going to be uh, confirmed around you. It's going to be confirmed. And it says mm-hmm. you got a lot of luxury around you too, Tiffany. you got a lot of luxury around you. So you okay. you're not gonna be a person that's not gonna have what you want. You you're gonna always get what you want. Mhm. And make it happen for yourself. Very good. Mm-hmm. Very very good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna waste no more time. You wasted the time in the past, and this is your time to shine, baby. And and what I'm seeing, I will shine on. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would shine on because it's beautiful. It's got nice stuff there for real. Yeah, because and plus in a way, this is Libra's year anyway. So you definitely got some extra goodness coming your way. So you got one of them that you you know you got to get you're gonna get because of your success because you worked it hard, and then mm-hmm. you got another blessing coming because you're a Libra. Because okay. this is your year. Mhm. Okay. Well, thank you, Miss Martha. I appreciate it. You're welcome, baby. And you know you can come anytime you want to. And I love I definitely- you. Love you too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having you me. Thank you Thank so you. much for calling this evening and listening to the show. And best wishes okay. on your wedding and everything. <laughs> Go Thank Libra. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. She's so sweet. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, I, I just love it. I find, I think that Libras tend to be, a lot of psychics are Libras. Amen. In this current time period, <laughs> we're healers, you know. <laughs> so. That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you, because see, we uh, we air, and when you air like that, you pick up on all type of communications and stuff like that. It's easier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We we definitely curve one. Well, we have another caller ready. I don't have a name yet. Who are we speaking with? You're on the Psychic Hi. Inside Show. Yes, hi, my name is Trish. Hi, Trish, welcome. Thank you. Um, I've never spoken to you, so I don't know what information you need. <laughs> well, you you want me to go ahead and talk to Joelle? Yes, you're you're on with your, your question from her time. <laughs> okay, 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 sweet. Okay, Trish, now what's your birthday, baby? Nine eighteen. Nine eighteen, and what year, sweetheart? Nineteen sixty. Nineteen sixty. Okay. Now, Trish. Okay. Let me do a numerology. You ever had your numerology done before? I have. I'm a seven. You're seven. Yes. Okay. Okay, you, by you being a seven, sweetie, you definitely spiritual yourself. <laughs> so don't, don't don't get a little offended because we talk about Libras. Because <laughs> 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 it's showing right here, sweetie, it's showing that you uh, you spiritual yourself, and it says this this is a, a seven year for you, right? And see, it makes uh, eight uh, by being a one. So um, did somebody pass around you? Did you deal with a lot of stuff with um, like? Uh, you know, like maybe like a transformation in your life or something? Have you been going through something? Um, I've been going through a lot of what I would call um, red tape, um, but and I have an, an ill family member. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's been uh, getting on you a lot. Uh, it's been kind of bothering you a whole lot because it's a matter of stress, a lot of stress. Yeah, yeah you've been stress, stressed out a lot. Yeah, the stress has been um, over a legal situation. 
Oh, okay then, okay. Okay. Well, um what type um is it something got to do with um is it is it they trying to make you owe something? Is it something that you're owing? Um Are it's a trying- zoning issue, uh over a the building that is being constructed. Okay, like building. Okay then. Okay, and you've been working hard with that. Is it like they trying to not approve it or something? Correct. Okay, that's what I was saying. You've been working really hard trying to keep it going. Five years. And and it's like, is it the people that you got working with you? Are they not doing what they're supposed to be doing? Um, it's neighbors and one city agency. Okay, okay. So so what what are you going to you going to have to do sweetie you going to have to really um do you have anybody helping you with it like an attorney or something I do Okay and and um and it's been 5 years since you've been working on it Well it went to court and I won and they seem mm-hmm. to have found a loophole and so now I'm I had to file an appeal to go back to court. I don't know if I'm actually gonna go or it's going to settle out of court. Okay, you don't know if it's gonna settle out of court. Uh, it's showing you're gonna get some type of information. It's gonna be delivered to you. So uh you should be getting some paperwork pretty soon. Okay. Yeah, some paperwork coming your way. And it, it to me it looks like um it could be some good news for you. Yeah, it could be some good news, but you gotta stay strong with it. You you can't you can't walk away from it. You been kinda like wanna walk away from it or something? Uh, I have. I wouldn't walk away from it if I were you. I would stand a little stronger with it because that look like what they want you to do. They want you to walk away from it. I know, but five years because I see paperwork. Me. No, because see what I'm saying, Trish. I see paperwork. They it's like somebody working in there, just causing the problem. It's it's like they're not giving all the right, correct information that they're supposed to be giving them, and they're making it difficult for you. So some of them go and do some research inside where you're filing the papers, because it's okay. like somebody in there is not doing their job. Are they doing their job to mess up your job? I put it that way. Yes, that that actually resonates with me. Uh huh. So that's what you have to work on, sweetie. But that. Okay. Do you see me uh, getting my occupancy permit and and moving in? Wait a minute. Do I see you? What I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. You said what now? Um, getting the final occupancy permit and being able to move in. The when the uh, when to get your building permit. Well, I have the building permit. I'm waiting for the occupancy permit so I can move. Okay, let me see here. I was seeing something like in August. Because it says it looks like you will get it because it's showing um, something in August. Looks like you might hear something uh, pretty soon. It's a lot of confused now. Well, this right here is showing 21 days or 21 weeks that you'll be victoriously in what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. I like 21 days, so you, 21 weeks. Am I involved? <laughs> but. No, no, see, what I do, I say 21 weeks, just, you know, it could be like 22 days, so it's still within the 21 weeks. Right, right. So, I, okay. um, you know what I'm saying? It could be like a day after the 21 days. It could be like 22 days, and so it would still be considered as within 21 weeks. Okay, got it. So I say 21 days, and I said, well, wait a minute here. I better tell her 21 weeks because I don't want to – you come to me. Hello? Oh, uh, her call dropped. Uh, I just got the message on the switchboard. I'll give her a moment to call back in, hopefully, and then okay. uh, I'll bring you back on the line just to finish up the, the conversation, Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. While we're waiting to see if uh, we can get uh, Lady M back on the line here, I'll just make a few announcements. 
Um, she should hopefully be coming back. I hope we didn't talk her battery dead on on her phone. But this is the Psychic Inside Show, and every Tuesday we have a different person who comes on to share their psychic story. And uh, I just love that we have an opportunity to hear from people's very personal lives about growing up uh, and if they didn't know when they were younger, if they found out when they were older, like what that has looked like for them. And I also really enjoy having uh, people call in to ask questions. I find it fascinating to uh, hear the stories that, you know, the questions that are asked and hear the advice that is provided. And I honor those of you who are willing to do that in public space and allow all of us to hear. And it really does help to mystify the whole um, psychic uh, exchange or counseling exchange that happens in a reading. So I, we don't take that lightly. And I thank each of you who have allowed that to happen on air this evening. Now, uh, on Thursday evenings is the Vibrarian Show. It's the same phone number, 646-668-8988, also at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're on, oh, here we go. I think we have her back. (laughs) Lady M, do I have you back on? Yes, yes thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to yes. bring Trish back on to go ahead and finish up. I think we're near the end, but uh, Trish, I do have you back on with Lady M. Well, thank you, uh, Lady <laughs> M. I, I was wondering, you were in the middle of a sentence and we lost you. Uh, I didn't know if you had anything else you wanted to tell me. Yes, sweetie, I was going to tell you that you, you, you keep your faith up and don't give up, honey, because, see, they're trying to push you so you can give up and walk away from it. But it looks like you're near the end of it being closed, like everything being taken care of. And uh, let your attorney kind of do some research and make sure that they don't keep on playing around with your paperwork because it looks like they're playing around with stuff, like there's somebody in there doing that. Right. Yeah. I just don't know who's doing it. Um, but, yes, I will take your advice and – and uh, I'm going to actually try to have him have a meeting and see if they can just back off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, because, see, I keep on seeing this woman with kind of like brown-looking hair. I'm not for sure. Uh, she looks like she's an older woman because she looks like she might be older than you. Yeah, she, she don't is. look like she she's around your age. You know, she looks older than you. Yeah, there is a woman, one of the neighbors, who fits that description. Yeah, it's, I think it's her. It's like she keeps up a lot, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, just kind of watch what you say to her. Yeah, okay. because it looked like when you say something to her, it looked like she take it and turn it around the other way. You know what I'm saying? Like turn the opposite way. I do. I do. Yeah, a lot of times what I tell people, let me tell you this, a lot of times, let me give you a little something that maybe you can do. I tell you, I tell people to write their name down when they do stuff like that and freeze them, put them in the freezer. So if you want to do that, to keep her from, you know, to block her from messing with you like that, you know, write her name down if you know a full name about ten times and put it in a little plastic bottle with a little kind pepper in it and then some water with a top and then close it up and put it in the freezer and see maybe if that will stop her from doing that. Because, you know, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, let me know what happened. Let me and Joel know what happened. I never, I only, so that was explained to me about six months ago, and I just put the name in the freezer. I didn't know about the water and the cayenne pepper. Yep, yep. Put in some water and cayenne, a little cayenne pepper and some water, and make sure you close her up when you put it, <laughs> a name in her and everything, close her real tight so she can't get out. <laughs> and then see how your case will be. <laughs> I will do that, and I will report back. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome, Trish, and have Thank a safe you. day now. You too. Thank you, Trish. I, I appreciate your call. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> now, I have a question. So why cayenne? Because cayenne, it'll it'll show um it'll irritate her and uh, it'll get her busy when she be doing something else and she will have time to bother her. 
<laughs> yeah, you know how sometimes it, it'll be itching her and then bothering her nerves, and she'll be so good. It'll drive her kind of almost like crazy where she'll be doing something else. She won't have time to do nothing with her. No. Now I've heard uh-huh. it like, you know, taking something, write it on and burning it, allowing the angels to help you or releasing it. But I never heard of putting somebody and freezing them out. <laughs> yeah, she got so, to stop them. Thank, you. <laughs> thank uh-huh. you for sharing that. We are getting uh-huh. to the last 10 minutes of the show, and I have, uh, it looks like, one more caller to bring on with a question this evening. I think we've got everybody who was in queue. And so, caller, hello. Oh, are you there? You? Okay. Yes, you. <laughs> <Is that me? laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> I have completely you doing? enjoyed myself. And just, you know, I've been listening from the beginning, and I have completely and totally enjoyed myself, so especially when you talked about your um, experiences with the church itself and trying to find your um, your place there and understanding what is good and what is bad. And for me, being a preacher's kid, that was one of the things that I struggled with um, a lot mm-hmm. in trying to understand who I was in, mm-hmm. the, um, in the infrastructure of religion and explaining my gifts. So my question, mm-hmm. um, my name is Monica, and do I need to give you my birth date? Uh-huh. Yes, I'll give me your birth date, baby. 12-22-67. 12-22-1967, okay. 67, yes, ma'am. And uh-huh. um, okay. my question is that um, as far as my, my it, basically money flow, and uh, as far as looking for a job, I'm, I'm a writer, and I've been trying to get some things out. But my cash flow and my reintroduction back into the workforce has been very stagnant. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to know what is the next step. Okay, the next step. Okay, it's showing you a three. Monica, and a three, with this being a one, one year, it says four. And so four represents, like, business. So you definitely are supposed to be doing your own thing in this year. This is supposed to be a year you're supposed to be, like, um, see, it's, it's like a three-year creative. So what did, you, what did you major in in college? African studies. Okay. And, and history, it said, yeah. <laughs> In history, okay. Were you mm-hmm. were you a t- uh, did you want to be a teacher? Were you, well, did you um, want to- I'm already a. I, I look at it. I've been doing that in my everyday walk. So I, you know, there was a push to be at one time a teacher, but you okay. know, or even a professor. But I, I hadn't. It just seems like that's that dream that everybody says, okay, this is what you're supposed to be. You know, you should be a teacher. You should be a professor. You should be this, this, that, and the other. But I haven't really – I teach naturally. So okay. me being in the classroom wouldn't be any different. No, no. What I'm seeing is you say you teach, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what you're supposed to be doing. But it's showing that you're creative too. So I don't know if you're into art. Do you, do you draw? A, you say you're a writer, right? So that's definitely creative yes, too. Okay. Mm-hmm. So are you you working on a book or something? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've been working on a book uh, since I was like nine. Oh, my God. Well, why haven't you got it published? Um, uh, For me, it's – I feel like my journey, I had to go through some things and learn some and learn a lot more in order for the – for me to write the whole book itself because it's a series of books that I have been blessed with in uh-huh. trying to get out. So I just haven't completely fin. I'm just about finished with the la- the first one that I would like to publish. That's what I'm saying. See, sweetie, it's showing you right here. And it's showing, um, it's showing you have to do it. You have to do work hard. It says you, you don't have to, you know, when you're writing books, you got series and stuff, but you have like a um, first, you know, like a first chapter, and then you got a second chapter. Then, you see, you don't have mm-hmm. to make up all at one time, you know that. You could just go ahead and do the, the 
you know, the beginning of the book, and then you can go in when that one's out and work on your other one. So you really need to do it, like, right this year because you got this card that says 19, and it's like 19 days, 19 weeks, or 19 months. And it's showing that somebody's been blocking you. I don't know who this person is that's got this person around you that's, like, negative. Is there somebody around you that's been older than you, that's been blocking you to keep you um, from doing certain things? I can't really, I can't really definitely say or pinpoint any, you know, I do have some a couple issues that I have been dealing with the last couple of years with um, some elders, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but see, I can't. Okay, is it your mom or something? Your dad? No, um, it's um not directly blood related. Oh, okay then. Okay, but, but see, see, but the reason why I was saying that because it's it's like you you have to go ahead and take her the things you got to take care of because if you don't, it's gonna put you back again. And you say you've been writing the book ever since you've been nine. Now you know uh-huh. yourself. You should be even got the book publishing everything. So, so yeah. the only person that's blocking you is yourself, and you okay. it's like you're letting them do that to you. So that's why I say this is a time for you to take control because this was like a four. This is like an independent time for you. You really got to do that. It, it's like you can still associate yourself with the person, but you got to go and take care of your stuff. You got to do that because if you don't, you know, um, this is a one year, right? And uh, see, you are three, so be a four. So you have to at least complete all this stuff at least within five years if the world is still here. I'm going to put it that way because I don't know how long this world's going to be here. But, see, by that time you'll be like a nine. And, see, a nine is like when a woman have a baby. It's your birth time. So you definitely got to hurry up and do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Don't don't take your time no more like that. Because, see, you know, at least it looks like August, you look like you're gonna. it's going to be a door opening where you're going to take it, uh, advantage and then or it could be eight months, you're going to go ahead and do something. But don't be like you say, I got to do it, I got to do it. Just go ahead and do it mm-hmm. like that. Okay. You see what so I'm saying? So you're saying uh, you, you can see <laughs> something opening up in August. Well, it's, you know, I've I've had a push to just in the last couple months to finish and to, you know, mm-hmm. the creativity has really been flowing, especially with the, all the energy that is coming in. So it's the, mm-hmm. the writing itself is taking me into – places where I'm I, even myself I'm astonished in some of the things that they're revealing and mm-hmm. the visions that I'm having so I'm ready to mm-hmm. you know finish but my biggest thing is what's holding me back is the the issue with the money because I'm not working and all the other extra stuff you, you know like you said before you got to have money to live so it's mm-hmm. going in between those two things like focusing let's find a job let's find a job but Let's get this book done. Let's get this book done. And the, me okay. working has impeded me finishing my book. Basically. But see, the thing of it is, see, that's what I'm trying to tell you, Monica. It's other stuff that you can do. That do you have children? Um, I, yes, I have one son, but much older. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but see, sweetie, what I'm saying is it's a lot of different other stuff you can do to make some money that where you can be able to um. You know, to get to some things like me, you know, I go out and I try to find out what's out there that I can do. Because, see, you're very creative. You were three. And, see, you really can work for yourself. So there's a job that you can really work for yourself and make some good money. And you don't have to, you know, be pressured while you're doing that. Okay. Just like I uh, do hate like I was, the, uh... I would say I do hate mm-hmm. to break in, but I do have one more caller to get on, and we're in the last few <laughs> moments of the show. So it okay. will carry over uh, in terms of the broadcast. Some of the calls may drop in this last few minutes, but I do have one more caller that has been holding that I want to try to bring on. Oh. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, 
Monica, thank you for your question. No <laughs> and problem. So I, okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you, and I'm going to go ahead thank and you, switch Monica. over here. Thank you. <laughs> I do want okay, to try to get this last person in. Um, caller, I know, 334, um, <laughs> is, uh, she messaged me and let me know, please get to me. Is this Kiki is your name? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Your name is what Thank now? Thank you. Kiki. Shakira. Kiki. Kiki. Yes. Kiki. Miss Kiki. That's cute, Kiki. <laughs> okay, Kiki. Kiki. Now give me. You're welcome, baby. Now give me your birthday. May 9th, 83. May 9th, 1983. Okay. Let me see. That's 10. That's 20. Okay, you are eight. And see, Shakira, uh, Kiki, what it is right here is showing that um, you're trying to accomplish some things in your life, right? And mm-hmm. it's showing uh, you've been going through, a, you're a Taurus, and then you really had to prove your strength a lot. You know, you, you really, yeah. you know, you're young, and you have to prove your strength. And it's showing that... Um, this, this is the year to complete it. When your birthday came in, you you, you wanted to, like, make some changes and transformation in your life, too. Mm-hmm. And did you have a specific question you want to ask me, baby, or you just me to go ahead and read you? You can read me, but I do want to just know about love, really, meeting someone. You said what, baby? I want to know about meeting someone. Will I be meeting anyone in the near future? About a, a, a mate? A mate? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you've been upset because of the mates you've been meeting that's not been, you know, making you happy. But if she wanted mm-hmm. somebody from your past is still thinking about you, they really love you, but they angry because of that maybe you and, you and that person didn't get along. Um, mm-hmm. you, you, uh, do you have two children? You have children? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. And how many do you have? I have two. Okay, good. Okay, that's this. So this is you. It's showing right here, baby. That um, you definitely will, you definitely will meet somebody. But right now, it's really not the time. It looks like you might meet somebody by next month. But mm-hmm. just don't go out looking for people to meet, sweetie. What you got to do right now is say you got to heal from what you've been through in the past. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Now, how long has it been since you've been in a relationship? Um, we broke up about two months ago, but I've seen him. Two? We hooked, up. <laughs> we hooked up about a week ago, but I made a decision that uh-huh. I was done done with that. I still talk to him, but I'm done with that relationship. Right. Okay. Well, see, that's the reason why I'm telling you, sweetie, you got to heal. Don't go rushing. Mm-hmm. So you can't jump out of the pot, the pot into the frying pan. You have to mm-hmm. wait until you get yourself healed and everything, and then you know what you really want. Because, see, you're really young. You're young right here, and you're thinking, oh, my God, I'm not going to be with nobody. you got a long time to go. <laughs> so yeah. if I were you, sweetie, I would just wait and then practice on what you want in life. Do a vision board of what you want, what type of man you want in your life. And you see what I'm saying? A vision board is going to put you to where you say, do I want this in my life? Do I want that? And so you have to be specific with your vision board because it's going to happen the way you want it. See, it's almost like a, a, a magic wand that you're doing. So you, you go ahead and do your vision board. You ever did a vision board? No, ma'am, but someone else was mentioning it to me and writing out, like, what kind of guy that I want to attract in my life and mm. different things. Yep, and it, it works. It really does, sweetie, I promise you. See, but you have to be specific. Like, this one lady that um, she was a big-time woman. She had her own company, but she didn't have a man, right? She was rich, mm-hmm. but she had a man. Mm-hmm. But she come to me and asked for a reading to find her man, and I said, well, have you did a vision board? And she said, what is that? So I told her about a vision board. So she put the vision board down. She got the man, but then she come out and said, Miss Martha, he's not, he can't find a job. And so I asked her, mm-hmm. did you put that in no, she didn't. So she went and put it in the vision board again, her and the guy, and I didn't see him no more. So apparently, you know, he got him a job. But what I'm seeing mm-hmm. is you have to be specific what you want, and it's really, it really, it really works. You might think it don't, but see, a lot of times when you, you know, you ask and you pray, 
own it. Mm-hmm. And you and you want somebody that's not married. You don't want nobody that's married. You want somebody that's single, and somebody's going to be respecting you, and you respect them. You want something right. that's, you know, you're going to be working together. You're a Taurus, so you like the, you're family oriented. So you want somebody you can hang out with. Y'all can take vacations together. Whatever you want, and you want with, with money, so you don't have to worry about no money. You, you, mm-hmm. everything you want, just put it down. And I'm telling you, it looks like it'll happen, and it'll happen real quick. I don't think it'll be a long time. Be on the purpose of, of why you're doing that. You need to be working on you so that you won't be bringing in the energy that you was with this other guy, and then, you know, you confuse it with this new person that's coming in your life. You don't want to bring what you have with him into this new relationship. Right, into the new one. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. See, you want to make sure, you know, that they the person that they are, and you don't want to be accusing him of being like the other person. Yes, ma'am. You see what I'm saying? You wouldn't want nobody to do it to you, so you see what I'm saying? So you got to yeah. be ready for this new relationship because I feel like it is going to be a good relationship. There's nothing that they can show you about about him. The, the type of guy that you're going to get? Yes, ma'am. Let me see. I'm going to look and see if I can see the sign that's coming up and everything. Let me see. That's the sign of this guy that's coming in for Kiki. I want to know right quick. Yeah, that's love coming your way. You're definitely going to have love there. <laughs> uh, it looks like, uh, like to me that he could be uh, a Leo. I'm hearing a Leo or something like that. Maybe he he's on Aries. He could be an Aries or Leo. What's your okay. baby? What's the, the guy's? Birthday is he an earth sign the one that you're involved with now? What's his birthday? He's a Virgo, and my kid's father that I was with for 17 years is a Sagittarius. Okay, he's a Sagittarius, but the one you was with now is a Virgo. Yes, ma'am. So, but this one looks like a Leo or an Aries, and it says you have to have patience. You have to have patience. And it's showing you sitting there, and it's showing that you're walking away. You you broke up with this guy almost in June. Y'all had problems in June. Um, well, y'all having some problems in the month of June. Yeah, yeah, we were. I mean, we've been. Yeah, it's showing it's, I've been right dealing here. with him since August of last year, and we've been on and off. You know. Yeah, he backstabbed you. Showing he backstabbed you. Yeah, mm-hmm. Showing he backstabbed you here. Uh, but it's showing do the vision board, do the vision board, and it says within uh, within three we- three weeks or three months. It looks like to me you'd be in a relationship. Wow! But, but you know what? The other before. one gonna be coming back. Hmm. The recent one trying to come uh, back. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna be coming back. He's still trying, and um, yeah. I'm sticking to what I said I was going to do, and that's practicing celibacy, you know, just to clear some energy, old energy, and just I'm trying to attract, you know, a relationship, a, a healthy relationship. Yep. You know? That's why I said you got to heal, sweetie. That's the reason why I say heal. Because, see, once you heal and everything, you, you're you going to be feeling much better when you be with this other guy. It's not going to be no distractions, and you're going to be feeling much better about yourself. Thank you, you for everything. Saying? I mean, I know that we're short for time and everything, but is there any steps you can give me towards my healing just that can help me? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Do your vision board and just start praying. Board. Yeah, you read the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my 23rd. shepherd, I shall not want. You keep on visualizing okay. that and and seeing it with, while you're doing your vision board. Stay focused on that prayer because that prayer right there is a good healing prayer. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. So just the vision well, board in itself everything. is healing, right? The yes. vision board. Mm-hmm. It, okay. Yep. Okay. Because you're putting the things in there that you want the positive things you want coming in your life. Yes, See, and ma'am. that's healing, getting the, the negative stuff out of your life. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for everything. You're welcome, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, you so much for your call. Right 
Thank you. Thank well, you guys. And please follow up with us again and keep us posted on if, if you know what happens for you. Thank you for connecting yes, on our I Facebook will. community. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank well, you. Guys. You're welcome. Ooh, Sorry, I had to clear that there, but thank you, Ms. Uh, Shakira or Kiki, for calling in and. Martha, I just thank you so uh-huh. much. This has been a wonderful show. And again, for people who want to reach you, they can find you on your webpage, which is ladympsychic.net. And then also uh-huh. your phone number, if you would give that again. Yeah, it's 404 838 3999. Okay. And. I just appreciate you so much. I learned some things about you that I didn't know, and I was definitely <laughs> enlarged you. and elevated because of your sharing. I'm so happy that you came on the Psychic Inside show this evening, and I Thank look you. forward to having you uh, again on other shows. Uh, we are going to be having a show about extraterrestrials and aliens on Thursday, Ooh. coming up at some point <laughs> in the future. Not, not this Thursday, but on a Thursday. <laughs> Thursday uh, evening, so I will definitely be reaching out to you, and I will keep our audience informed as to when you will be back joining us again to share your knowledge and wisdom, and uh, is, and if you have anything else to say, we're going to wrap everything up. No, sweetie, you're tired, Joelle, and I'm tired. We both are tired, sweetie, yes, I just you. really love it. I had a I had a beautiful, this is a blessing, and I'm so happy to see you doing this beautiful, wonderful thing. You're, oh, God, it's, it's a blessing. Mm-hmm. Well, you have helped awesome. me along that journey to encourage me to follow the guidance that I receive, and you've been placed in my path as part of that guidance, and I am just grateful and love you for it. And to our audience this evening, thank you for tuning in and sharing this couple hours with us on the Psychic Inside Show. I hope that you have all of the blessings that you can possibly maintain in the next week and that all positivity and love comes your way. Namaste. Thank you, you, sweetie, the same there. Be blessed, baby. I love you. Thank you. Love you. Good night, all. Okay. Good night. Bye-bye.